Hello, how are you? I'm going to get straight on today because we've got lots to do to keep you busy. Bit of a clue there for today's sound, so shall we see what it is? Are you ready to write it with me? Give those fingers a wriggle. You can do it with your finger in the air if you prefer. And we're going to start at the top with a straight line all the way down. And then we're going to go back just below, another clue, below the middle of our line. And we're going to go all the way around and then back to just above the bottom of our letter. There we go. What did we make? We made a B, B, B. Well done, everybody. And I've put my book in my Letters and Sounds book. I've had a try. Do you think you can do it? Can you practice? B, B, B for barbecue, which I won't be having today because it's raining a lot outside. If you want to do your B with your hands, you can try this way. B, B, B. Well done. So we have three challenges to do with the first sound, and you can choose. You can do one of the challenges, you can try two, or you can try three of the different challenges. But they all are to do with biscuits, so I didn't think you'd mind very much. The first idea to do with biscuits was just to make a pretend one. You can use any paper you've got in the house or wrapping paper. I was lucky that I had some brown baking paper in my kitchen. So I scrunched and screwed it up and squeezed it into a circle shape. And that's very good for those muscles again. I used a little bit of sellotape on the back to make sure that it all stayed together. And then with a pen, I drew on some chocolate chips. And maybe later, I might play a little bit of a trick on someone and I might offer them a very yummy biscuit and see if they take it. Do you think that would be a funny joke to do with someone in your family? So maybe you could try and make a pretend biscuit. Our second idea was decorating a biscuit from your cupboard. And you can use anything you've got. We had some marshmallows and some icing and some chocolate sauce. So my Charlie did me a very nice smiley face. He also made some alien biscuits. So however you want to decorate your biscuits is fine because I'm sure they'll all be just as yummy. I'm looking forward to the smiley face one later. And finally, we thought we could even try and make some biscuits from the very beginning. All we needed, we found a very simple recipe for you, and all we needed was 100 grams of butter, 50 grams of caster sugar, and 150 grams of self-raising flour. And all we had to do was mix it and squidge it together in a bowl, and then we managed to make our biscuit dough. We're going to give that a little squeeze, and then we're going to take some balls of our dough, and roll them around in our hands and this is why I love this one so much because it's so simple you don't need any cutters you don't need a rolling pin you can just give it a bit of a squidge and then I like these biscuits best when my little boy Charlie puts a thumb pin in them for me but you might want to use a fork and give it a bit of a pattern you might have a different idea for your biscuit and then you can cook them for about 15 minutes, maybe just a couple of minutes longer in your oven. Make sure you have a grown up helping you when you're cooking them and make sure you are very careful. And I nearly forgot to say, make sure you wash those hands before you do any decorating or any cooking. But have a try that simple recipe if you can. Before you go off and do your biscuit challenges, we've got a story for you. And this story is about Bob and Brian, who are best friends, by Georgie Ripper. Should we have a little look? Brian, the guinea pig, lived in a nice comfy cage in Pete's pet palace with his best friend, Bob. Brian had short, shiny fur, which he was very proud of. So which one do you think that is? I think you're right, I think it's this one. Bob had long tufty fur, which he didn't really think about all that much. The two little guinea pigs spent their days doing what guinea pigs do best, eating, sleeping and playing I Spy. Brian was terribly good at I Spy and almost always won with clever words like b, 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 what do you think it could be? Budgerigar and dog food. Well done, Brian. 
One day Bryan and Bob were busy playing when a little boy walked into the shop. "I spy with my little eye," said Bob, but before he could finish the little boy reached into the cage and picked him up. Bryan watched as Bob was put into a cardboard box with holes in the lid. He just had time to wave good bye and Bob was gone. Suddenly the cage felt very big and empty. Oh dear, sighed Brian, I shall miss Bob. And he trundled off to find a peanut to cheer himself up. But he didn't cheer up at all. In fact, every day Brian missed Bob more and more. And every day he felt more and more miserable. Then one day Brian was sitting in his cage feeling very glum when he noticed an old man peering down at him. The man picked him up and smiled. He's just what I was looking for, he said, and he put Brian into a box. At first, Brian was quite excited. Maybe there will be other guinea pigs in my new home, he said to himself. He began to whistle and he felt much more cheerful. But that evening he found himself all alone without so much as an earwig for company. Brian sighed. He wished he was back in Pete's pet palace. At least he could chat to the goldfish there. I wonder what's happening to my best friend Bob, whispered Brian. He's probably forgotten all about me by now. He wiped away a tear and he curled up in the straw. The next morning Brian hadn't even opened his eyes when he felt his big box being lifted up. What's happening now, he grumbled, but he didn't really care. Things couldn't get much worse than they already were. He drifted back to sleep, dreaming of Pete's pet palace and winning a peanut throwing contest with Bob. A little while later, Brian was woken up by a buzz of excited voices outside his box. Oh, bother, he said crossly. Can't I at least have some peace and quiet? Then suddenly the lid was lifted off and bright light streamed into the box. Brian looked up to see a little boy smiling down at him. He sleepily wondered if he had seen this boy somewhere before. The boy picked Brian up and gave him the biggest hug he'd ever had. Oh, thank you, Grandad, he said happily. He's just what I wanted. I shall call him Snuffles. The little boy put Brian into his new hutch. Brian stretched out and sniffed the air. That's funny, he said, and he sniffed the air again. As Brian watched, a pile of hay in the corner started to move. And all of a sudden... Brian! Bob! Look how happy they are to see each other. Brian was so excited to see Bob that he thought he might just burst with happiness. That evening, sitting together in their hutch playing I Spy, the two little guinea pigs had almost forgotten they'd ever been apart. I spy with my little eye, said Bob, something beginning with P. But Brian was already fast asleep. wonder what he was going to say that starts with P. What a lovely story and isn't it nice to know that even if we haven't seen our friends for a little while, when we do see them again, it'll be just like we've never been apart. That's very exciting, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to go now and let you have some fun either making pretend biscuits or real yummy ones or decorating the ones you've got. Whatever you do with them, I hope you've got someone to share them with. Have a lovely day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.